and I own McDonald Timing, and this is video number one of our basics series. We're, we're going to talk about networking today, and I know a lot of people are, are going to be very afraid of that term because networking, in some ways, if you have used Windows products like Windows XP or NT or basically anything up until Windows 7 and maybe even just Windows 10, Windows, Windows networking has been a bit of a challenge, and even right now, it's sometimes an art and it's sometimes a science. But the thing is, and I feel confident that I can, by at the end of this video, get you reliably connecting to the various things that you need to connect to in order to uh, actually do this job. And in reality, it's, it's somewhat simple. Uh, I'm not going to say it's very simple, and I'm certainly going to be willing to say that it's also clever, but there are various things that you can do to give yourself a better, better chance as far as trying to figure out where things are going and go from there. So, let's get started. So, in order to understand IP addresses, I've gone ahead and created a network map for what is a kind of a standard setup for me for a track and field event. We've got a couple of cameras, we've got a scoreboard, and we've got a wind gauge, and then we've got several computers that are doing various things. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming, so let's go back to a very, very basic setup where we just have two cameras, you know, one main camera and an Identalinks, and then a laptop, a single laptop. They're all connected through a switch. Uh, we would refer to it as a switch rather than a router because it's not taking an internet signal in from a modem or anything, and it's typically unmanaged. I prefer a Netgear, eight port that has four ports available for power over ethernet and those can power most of the poe cameras that Lynx has produced in the last few years so the only thing that we're doing as far as the ip address is we are assigning the Lynx computer that 192.168.0.5 and that is a very common address that Lynx themselves sends out in their materials and, and recommends you use you can use other addresses, but this one is very, very simple and it runs in the, in the right range for most people and creates little, little issue. Now the camera, the main camera, which would be booted first, is going to get the IP address of dot six and then the identalinks dot seven. Lynx is actually assigning these addresses themselves to the cameras as they are loaded up. And so you don't have to do anything to them. All you need to do is make sure that there's nothing else on the network in that range that could create a conflict. So going back to the original image, we can have those ones and then we have added a reverse camera. Beyond that, we are going to have several computers that are doing various things. Uh, my Meet Pro computer and a scoreboard computer, which is running a scoreboard that we see at the finish line. We also have the Lantronics Wii Box, which is connected to a wind gauge. And then typically we'll have an additional uh, you know, scoreboard here or there. And so all of them need IP addresses in order to communicate to each other efficiently. Now there's a little bit of a debate. You could say that the Meet Pro computer doesn't need it, and sometimes that's true, but the scoreboard computer definitely needs an IP address to run the most popular scoreboard software, which is Result TV. The WeBox will have a, an IP address. The uh, microgate up top always has an IP address. And, and so all these things have these IP addresses. And basically the thing is we just wanna make sure that the IP addresses are not the same number at the end. They need to be the same until that fourth you know, number basically. So they all need to be 192.168.0. Now where it gets a little bit tricky is that you can actually have an additional set of of IP addresses that are the same that you use you know, alongside of it, but they're going to be on different switches. That's the most important thing. So it, I have a backup that I, I normally run. I run it with the same exact configura configuration on the Lynx camera's IP address is always gonna be 192.168.0.5 and because that way they're interchangeable and it's going through a separate switch and then the, the backup camera is getting the same 192.168.0.6 address assigned to it automatically. And that's okay because they're not running on the same switch. They are running on different networks entirely. Okay, so it's a little bit confusing, but as far as what these are, are what the computers and what the switches are actually seeing is it's all differentiated data because it's not on the same one. Okay, and the last thing we're going to cover in this video is how to change the IP address. So 
In Windows, in the lower right tray, there's going to be an icon. That icon looks like a computer with sort of a weird little box in the left, or it might look like a Wi-Fi logo if you are on Wi-Fi. Uh, we're going to right click on it and then click Open Network and Internet Settings. Then a big thing comes up and we're going to choose Change Adapter Options from below Advanced Network Settings. And then we're going to double click on Ethernet and then we're going to click on Properties and then Internet Protocol Version 4 TCP slash IPv4. We're going to double click on that again and then we're going to go ahead and say use the following IP address. We're going to type in the IP address we want 192.168.0.5 and then we're just going to click the subnet mask field and that's going to populate for us automatically. We don't need a gateway and we're going to click OK. This will change the IP address for that adapter and only that adapter. So if you change the IP address for the Ethernet adapter, that is not going to affect the Wi-Fi adapter. Um, and so you shouldn't need to change the Wi-Fi adapter. In fact, you should probably leave that alone. But for, for links purposes, for Ethernet, we are going to want to set IP addresses. Uh, for the most part, for nearly every computer, there's really not a lot of draw, drawback to uh, not set one, but hopefully, this video helps you understand, at least on a basic level, what's happening as far as the networking goes. And this will help you get over the hump when it comes to the initial round of setup for finish links. And the good news is most of these settings are going to be robust and sticky, so it's not something you should be playing around with every time you boot up your computer. Hope that helps.